Hey there, welcome back guys. We're going to take apart the Pavo 20 and install a GPS unit on it. That's right. Uh, we've done the other Pavo series, but a lot of you who have reached out to me directly and um, expressed interest and disappointment too on why I didn't install the GPS or do a video for the Pavo 20. Well, here it is. Actually, my original intention was to install the uh, LADAR sensor, but apparently it didn't work. But it's the same process. Um, and I'll leave a link in the description below as to which wires go where, but it's really straightforward. Um, you should have no trouble doing it as long as you follow the directions and choose the colors that's right for you when corresponding to how you want to connect them to the flight controller and how you want to connect them to the GPS or, or any other attachments that might work with this, but so far only the GPS works. And as you can see, you want to disconnect the light and when you disconnect the light, you just pop it right through the hole. Uh, there's a, I think this version of the drone, you have to solder the light on. I think the newer one, um, it comes already done. As you can see, uh, I just need to put some flux on it and it just to, to help with the soldering connection so that things just flow and that brush worked a little bit, but I'm just using this little pointer tool, which works really well. Uh, I'll leave, leave, and this soldering iron, oh my God. The best is I was looking, I was in a search for holy grails of soldering irons and I found this one to the point where thankfully I can return the old one until I have until January. And this thing is just phenomenal. The uh, pencil, as I believe it's called, uh, soldering iron. It, it just does, and it's about, I think I paid 40 bucks for it. And um, it does everything that the big robust soldering iron does, except this you can actually take along with you and attach external power to it. As you can see, I'm just, adding solder uh, to the to the connectors, uh, to the points that need to be. And once you have solder at the points that are gonna be soldered, you wanna clip your wires. And after you clip your wires, don't forget to tin them. You wanna tin your wires so that that helps with the connection and, and solidify things. So when you solder them into the connection, the wires have to be snipped really short. And as you can see, everything's done. Uh, on this end, when it came to putting solder at the uh, points that need to be soldered on the flight controller, and I think I got one more left. Um, it, you know, it's a little tricky. That's why I need that thing you see on my head, that white thing, a little magnifying thing. And I think there's one more. It's, a, it's tight, but with the um, magnifying glasses on, it, everything just looks 3D-ish and, and, and you, you, you gain the confidence and are totally capable of doing it. As you can see, I have one more wire here. You have the ground, and then you have the R1 and the T1, and then um, the power. All right, so you know everything is pretty straightforward. And the five volts, you want to make sure you attach it to the five volts and not the nine volt. Uh, but it's straightforward because I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, the only thing that I was disappointed with was that the uh, lidar sensor didn't work. But I'm just adding more solder, just to you know make my connections a little bit more solid and better, so that it just holds. Because if you're new to flying, as you can see, this is how it looks when it's done. When you have all your wires connected. Um, you know, you're like, voila, but you're not done just yet because just because the wires are there, you're like, wow, this is great. I got it. You want to make sure that nothing is bridged, right? Uh, see, this is how it looks. Look at that. And to make sure nothing's bridged, what you want to do is check for continuity. Continuity means you put a wire on one connector and put it on the other and just pray, right? That it doesn't beep because if it beeps, that means you're your solder connections bridged and you can actually short out the flight controller which is very expensive um, and then wind up having to buy a new one which um, or just blow the whole thing up which you which you might have seen in my last video um, when I had originally done this and so there you go I'm gonna test for continuity and thankfully you know I got lucky here um, and there was no continuity so no, none of my connections were bridged which meant that if you put the battery in the thing wouldn't explode uh, which is what you want to do beforehand. But another way to test to see if your connections are bridged, you would use a, um, a smoke stopper. As you can see, I'm just applying back tape, I'm not back tape, black tape, so that, you know, the connections just stay more secure. And I figured, hey, why not put some on the flight controller, right? So I'm like, yay, I'm gonna put some on the flight controller. You have to cut it, just use the excess for that. Cause you know, you just wanna secure your connection. Some gardening scissors I got from the garden, nothing special. I was actually using that for roses. And, um, you know, you just want to make sure you, it's secure because if you're new to this, like me, um, you're going to crash. And when you crash, the GPS 
unfortunately falls off. And here we go. We're going to speed things up a bit so that you guys can see what actually happens when I, I'm just kidding. I'll just slow down a little bit, but yeah. So basically putting it back together, you put it back together the same way you took it apart and it's, it's a breeze, but I, um, I realized that I forgot to put some tape on the, one of the motors because the wires was hanging out, but I just took it apart and um, did that again. And then as you can see, the LiDAR sensor is there. Um, and it's the same wiring configuration. It goes on the same ports, but unfortunately it didn't work because I guess this flight controller is just isn't set up for it. But as you can see, it's a really cool setup. And don't worry, this is still the GPS because what we'll do is we'll just take off the LiDAR sensor, a radar thingy, and then just um, uh, swap the wiring. So as you can see, I made a little hole, put it in a little um, heat sink uh, thingy in case it crashed. And thankfully I didn't heat sink. You see, I'm taking it apart, putting it back together. There you go, and it's ready to go. Kind of neat, huh? And so this is where the smoke stop come in, comes in. So even though you check for continuity to make sure that everything is good to go, right? But as you can see, the smoke stopper does the same thing, but what it does is it stops the power from going through so that nothing shorts out and most likely you would get a red signal. But in this case, everything worked out really well. Um, there was no short circuit and my solder connections were good. And I'll leave a link to this in the description. And as you can see, the LADAR sensor didn't work. Um, and that, that was actually suggested by one of our viewers. They had asked and I was like, Hmm, that'd be kind of neat. And so as you can see, you want to make sure, you know, the T1 goes to the T1 and the R1 goes to the R1, wherever it's supposed to cor correlate to on the, on the board. And I'll leave that in the description, um, so that you guys can see, and you don't have to pause the video and go back, but it'll be there. Um, but everything, you know, works, you'll see in the end. And then finally, to see that it works, when you want to make sure your GPS, remember we took off the LiDAR sensor, you, you launch uh, Betaflight, and then you go into Expert Mode, and then a new menu appears. And with your new menu, you'll see on the, uh, it says uh, GPS, right? So what you want to do is we're going to speed things up, because what I did was I plugged it in, and then um, let it uh, get the satellite connection before putting the battery in. You want to do that. Okay, or before connecting to the goggles, as you can see, the GPS is working. We've got our location, but now we want to connect it to the goggles so that we can see everything in the OSD, right? Um, so basically, I'm going to connect it to my computer using Reflector, and Reflector will let us see what's actually happening on the phone. Um, there's actually a DJI update. Um, I just got a push notification for that. So now um, Reflector, this is how Reflector launches. It never launched this way before, but it's fine. You just have to change the settings every time you, you load it. And by default, this is how it does. But I just want to see what's behind me. So what you got to do is rotate left or right, depending on which phone you have. And then, so in this case, I'm going to rotate right again. As you can see, the GPS is working, right? But you're like, wait, is it really working? It is. I, I mean, I'll show you how to change things in the settings in the OSD so that you can um, figure out what you need to do. And then what you do is you choose no frames and reflector, and that allows you to shrink it. But you can't shrink it until you actually, you know, press on that green thingy. Now I can see what's behind me. And now like a little corner thing, you will show up, see? And now I can just shrink it. Why? This is how, what you're seeing right now is how the Vector originally loaded by default, but now they have it set up like AirPlay, which is a bummer. All right, so here we go. Home direction is the arrow. See the arrow on the, on the right-hand corner at the top? See, it disappears, reappears. It shows up as a line until you start to fly, and then you'll see an arrow too. Um, then we have GPS, see that? Longitude, latitude. Uh, that works really well. And it's active, as you can see. It has a, it's just, you know, because the earth is moving and it's just catching up. The numbers are they're right there. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know what that is. RSSI, DBN, I don't know. So I just unselect that. I like to keep throttle position, as you can see. And um, what else is there? I'll just move this out a little bit. Uh, and I'll leave a link to this in the description so that you guys, some of you guys that don't want to set up, uh, do the setup for this, but there's actually a video, see there's my hand right there, where I show you how to set up, because you have to actually turn this on in the settings so that you could actually um, activate the GPS uh, unit so that it just works, so it doesn't just turn on automatically when you plug in your um, drone to the uh, beta flight. And that pretty much sums it up. I hope this video helps you in getting an idea of what it's like to put the GPS on the Pavo 20. It's a great drone, a little, I'd say much more stable than the, the, uh, the uh, previous ones. It's more robust. It, I like how they protected the camera. Um, who knows, maybe down the line they'll include GPS units on there. 
Um, but this, uh, some of you are, might have asked before why the GPS. It's good if you're in a wooded area, or if you're in, or you can, and you crash the drone, you can't find it. You could always uh, copy the GPS coordinates and put them in an app, and then you can walk to where your drone is. And sometimes it doesn't give the GPS coordinates. It'll tell you how many feet you are from it. So uh, there was one particular time where I crashed. And it was said it was nine feet away, and I know exactly where nine feet was from where I was standing, because the area I was standing was not was sort of in the woods in, in the back of the house. Um, so I, you know that helped me that way, or you know it, it'll help you level up when it comes to your skills, so that you too can um, uh, become better at building, fixing, repair, and making customizations to your drone um, or Cinewoop or quadcopter or whatever you want to call it and um, feel free to leave your comments and questions down below or ideas for other videos remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time